Up on Film! I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... I am the Pope in question. My name is Reverend May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. It is episode 462 of this podcast. It is, this is a very special episode. And, uh... Really love the Jeff graphic. We've got Jeff coming up. We've yes. got a historic approximation, our educational segment, which will feature a phenomenal musical number. Yes. Then we've got our uh, halftime madness, and then we discuss this week's film, which is, of course, you can see right there in between the both of us, the Flintstones on the Rocks. Yes. I had the unfortunate, unfortunate uh, timing to premiere right before 9-11, so it's not like people were clamoring for a fresh take on the Flintstones, which I think is a shame, because I didn't think that this was that bad. Oh, wait, it's not the Flintstones. It's Creed I.I. Yes. Creed I.I. For a movie called Creed I.I., a shockingly small amount of pirate-related material, I thought that this film, Creed I.I., would feature yeah. uh, Adonis Creed leaving the boxing world to become some sort of a swashbuckling pirate, but yeah. surprisingly small amount of piracy in the I, entire film. I, I, I was disappointed, and really, by this time... Rocky deserves a peg leg. Yeah, yeah, agreed. And, uh, you know, he's had the turtles this whole time. Maybe he can cash in the turtles and get himself a parrot. Yeah, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Or a monkey. Yeah. Uh, Bunny, I am going to give you the floor for a while. Okay. Uh, but before I do, I wrote some stuff that I think is pretty good. So can I run through a Jeff before I give you the floor? Sure. Okay. Jeff! Bunny, calm down. Your name is not Jeff. <laughs> Take deep breaths, okay? Put your head between <coughs> your legs. Turn and cough. Jeff is the name of our reoccurring monologue potpourri of news and bits and bobs and skits. My mama used to say that Jeff was like a box of chocolates in that oftentimes our monologue has been known to give people diabetes. Or a good case notice, of Jeff's. Notice how I pronounced it diabetes and not diabetes, which is how my generation always pronounces diabetes, but I'm trying to keep it on the level. Now, me, myself, and I, me personally, I preferred the other name for this segment, the Betty White Memorial Podcast segment brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends Download today, but we both agreed on Jeff, and so Jeff it is. Let's well, Jeff it up! Well, the big problem now, there is I can never remember that damn title when I'm in Photoshop. The Betty White Memorial Podcast segment brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends Download today. Exactly. I I have this great idea of one day we're going to record the podcast, but I'm sick as a dog. So what I do is I just give my notes to my wife and have yeah. her try and be me and do the podcast. And I think it's a really funny idea. However, um, with that idea in my mind, I now know a large portion of the podcast I have already memorized. Yeah. You know, like, I don't need to write the entire intro to Steve's historic approximations to, to hack to historic approximations. I just have it memorized. Just like I have memorized the Betty White Memorial podcast segment brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Download today. So, uh, oh, there's Natasha saying no. It's a great idea. It's a funny idea, and I like it. Plus, honey, did you see my cleavage game? My cleave is on point. I thought this might bring in more viewers. 
if I showed off the cleave. So anyway, uh, if this were a popular show, if this were a popular podcast, yeah. which it isn't, and I don't mind because I still love it. Uh, if this were a popular podcast, then Jeff it up. That would be we'd be making bumper stickers. We'd be making uh, stickers to put on water bottles. Yes. We'd be making uh, shirts. Jeff it up. And then you'd wear it around and people would go, oh, so you're a poffy. Cool. And that would be the way that people knew each other. Uh-huh. You know, bringing people together. But we're not a popular show, but that's okay. First off, Bunny, yes. I stumbled upon an article. In one of them, one of them uh, listicles. Yes. From Reader's Digest, of all places. And the headline was, 11 popular songs you didn't realize are actually racist. Okay. That was the name of the article. And I, I, I have a lot of... I have a lot of opinions. If you need a Reader's Digest a Reader's Digest article to tell you that David Bowie's China Girl might not be on the up and up? Yes. I don't know. You might want to get some therapy. It's like, wait a second. Brown Sugar by the Rolling Stones might not be a song of racial harmony? What? You're telling me that Ahab the Arab is somehow a racist song? <laughs> I, hold on. <coughs> hold on a second here. You mean to tell me that America's sweetheart, uh, Ray Stevens, might be a little bit racist? I, 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 I cannot believe this. Next yeah. thing you know, you're going to be telling me that the streak isn't a tender love ballad. Yes. Everything beautiful, except for minorities. It Legit, the last song on the list of this Reader's Digest listicle is Loretta Lynn's song, Your Squaw is on the Warpath. Wait, that's racist? No, I am shocked. Yeah. Loretta Lynn's "Your Squaw" is on the warpath. Apparently, that song has been racist this whole time, Bunny. Can you uh, believe I, that? I was, I was kind of hoping for a a more subtle list. You know, like we we had covered "Sweet Home Alabama." Yeah. And that is a racist song, but that is a lot more subtle. Yeah. This list is just like, yeah, did we need the list really? I mean, just. You wanted a more subtle list, like, for example, the classic rock song, You're, We're Not Gonna Take It, The It Immigrants. Okay. That's the, that's the, that's the secret. But, Bunny. In related news, and this is just as important as what we just discussed, okay? In related news, I'm so old, I'm discussing Reader's Digest articles on my podcast. This, this is a, uh, yes. That is a sign of age. You, you may have to seek, like, some counseling or something. I am... So well, I have a therapist. You know, we're She's be awesome. Sponsored by Geritol. Yeah, I do have a therapist. Her name is Rebecca. She's freaking awesome. Uh, I absolutely love her. So, I'm 46. I don't look it because estrogen is a hell of a drug. But I'm trying to embrace my old age. I don't have gray hairs, and I'm upset about that. But I don't diet. My mom, legitimately, when I was a kid, my mom would sit in front of the TV and she'd be watching her soaps, her stories, and she'd be folding clothes and she would go through her hair like this and she would look for 
white hairs. And if she found a white hair, and this is true, this is true. Yeah. She would get a Sharpie and color that individual hair black. With a freaking Sharpie. Can you yeah, believe don't, that? Don't do that. That's just sad. What type of a weirdo? I miss my mom. She's not dead. She's in Phoenix. Yeah. But I'm trying to embrace my old age. Uh, I'm an old woman, and I'm leaning into it. I wasn't excited about getting old, but I am pretty excited about the possibility of being an old woman. So I'm trying to lean into it. And so let me show you how much I'm leaning into it. Here's my purse. Okay. Here's my purse. And I'm going to look inside my purse. You're not going to believe what I have in here, Bunny. The ultimate sign that I'm a woman. Strawberry candies that I'll never eat. No, that no, that, that is not a sign that you're a woman, but that is a sign specifically you are an old woman. I know. I'm an old woman. It's so exciting. It's so exciting. I, I went Taylor to the Swift dollar store. got those in her purse. I'm sorry. I, I went to the dollar store and I saw those. I saw a bag of those strawberry candies at the dollar store and I was like, ugh, those damn strawberry candies. I, I, I can't buy those because I'm not old enough. But I'm that, 46. Is, the one, that okay. is the one item my purse is missing. I don't yeah. have little candies. Yeah. I it, it I've only got two or three of those strawberries there. It's primarily filled with Jolly Ranchers. Jolly Ranchers have become my go-to for anxiety. Yeah. I absolutely love them. Uh so I have a strawberry purse. Bunny. Yes. I want to preface this next statement by saying that I am currently on a very fulfilling road of self-improvement in a way that is very uh, peaceful and relaxing and uh, white. I'm doing a white woman journey of self-improvement. Very live, laugh, love of me. I'm trying to be more mindful, less anxious, and more of a better person overall. I at least want to be better than the person who I used to be for a very long time. Uh... I'm a I'm a church going gal now. Yes. I'm active in my local Episcopalian church. I'm a liturgical reader. I've given up drinking. I'm trying to be better. Transitioning is a time of change and I'm trying to change. It's as simple as that. With that out of the way. I miss old porn parodies. Old cheesy porn parodies. You know where any company could throw together a cheap triple X parody and rush it direct to VHS? Yeah. Edward Penis Hands. Yes. Uh, plump, fiction, plump Friction. Yes. That was another one. Plan 69 from Outer Space. I'm just saying. I'm trying to be a better person. <coughs> A, a, I'm a active in my church. I went to church this morning. That being said, Poppenheimer, Poppenheimen, the Oppenheimer oh, porn okay. parody, basically writes itself. Yeah, I would think so. It, it, the movie writes it. That entire porn writes itself. Uh, oh, the bomb test was wonderful, Doctor. Oh, no, there's something wrong. That wasn't an atomic bomb. It was a horny bomb. And then all the people, all the scientists watch it, take off their clothes. They start doing it. I mean, that's 25 minutes of the film right there. I have become erection. Destroyer of vagina. That is perfect. That is absolutely perfect. We are on to something. Uh, also, I got a job. Yes. Very excited about that. I'm working at a Halloween store that will remain nameless. I, I had my first day of work this past week, and I was all nervous because I've never, I've never had a job as a woman. Yeah. My wife says that I have had a job as a woman. I was, 
I was hired to do story times, but a retail job, a retail job as a woman. This was my first time yeah. working in retail as a woman, and I was all nervous. You know, one thing about the Midwest is that all of the women are behind the cash register on the floor greeting customers because they are nice and pretty and sensitive and men love them and all the guys are in the back sweating and lifting heavy boxes and staying away from customers because men are horrible and women are pretty and you go to every store every single solitary store and 90 percent of the time it'll be exactly that no men are allowed behind the register men are supposed to be in the back lifting heavy boxes so like I was worried, you know, because I'm a trans woman, but uh, I was there with, with my apron on, you know, greeting people and ringing people up, and it was just, I was a woman, and it's, it's very exciting, and, and yay. Yeah. <sighs> okay, nice, funny. Nice, very nice, very good. Yeah, I'm very happy. I'm working a couple more times this week, this upcoming week. I'm very excited about it. Bunny. How, I mean, as far as jobs go, that has always sounded like a pretty fun one. Yeah, yeah. It's a dream job for me. And here's the thing, is that I, 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 to, I told all the managers this. Uh, I, it, I treat their radio station like I'm doing karaoke. Okay. Like I was just, I'm there behind the register and I don't care if there's a bunch of people in the store, if the manager is right behind me, if they start playing Dracula's Wedding by Outcast, I'm going to be singing and dancing like I'm at a freaking nightclub in a cruise ship. Okay. Dracula's Wedding. And, and you know, they play uh, like Thriller and I'm just there like, uh, okay, your total's going to be 1874. <laughs> and I'm doing the thriller dance and all that. Like, I absolutely love it. And I guess customers notice that I'm super happy in this part-time job because uh, I have I have, uh, I have, have the best numbers for donations in the entire store. Yeah. Nice. I didn't get anyone. I only got one customer to donate money, but I got every customer to round up their pennies for the children. So, you're welcome, children. You know how you're breathing and you're alive? You're welcome. Well, now, you are still what? new in the job. So, I am. So, I, I am. think we're going to have to revisit this question a little later. But, but I'm wondering if, you're, if your opinion is that maybe people who shop at Spirit Halloween, Halloween people tend to yeah. be more liberal. No, because here's the thing. We are not inside the mall. If we were inside the mall, then yeah, we'd get a bunch of cool kids and death cats and mall rats and Halloween people. Yeah. We are outside of the mall, right between a Coles and a Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh. I get location, so many rednecks, location, so location. many bros, so many Christians, so many drunk chicks, so many redneck families. It's ridiculous. But I'm there with makeup on and some yoga pants on and I'm singing and dancing and I'm greeting people and not a single person j just saw me as a trans person and I felt really good about it. And yeah, right now, not a lot of uh, not a lot of uh, Halloween people have come in just yet. Yeah. Yeah. Bunny! Yes? Take the floor. Please. I... Please. Well... I, I, I don't know how else to put it, so I'm just gonna blurt it out. Kid Rock drank, drank a fucking Bud Light. What a little bitch. I, I can't, I, I can't, I, I mean, I always thought Kid Rock was a man of honor. We gained Kid Rock, but we lost an Alice Cooper. I, I, yeah. That hurt. Alice Cooper 
Alice Cooper pissed me off when I heard his anti-trans uh, rants and, and how he just went off against trans people. And at first I was shocked by it, and I'm like, but you, your entire career was based on it yeah. bending gender norms. But then I realized, oh, wait. He is a rich-ass white person who lives in Scottsdale, Arizona. What was I to expect? Yes. I, 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 well, I, I've always loved Alice Cooper, so just there I'm really disappointed and hurt by it. But Especially since it's Halloween coming up. You know, Welcome to My Nightmare was my go-to Halloween song. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, God. Yeah. Love that song. Uh, but, but, like... Even with what what he had to say, like, have you been asleep for the last like five five to seven fucking years? I don't know. You're still but... worried about bathrooms. I expect new and fresh, disgusting things from Alice yes. Cooper. If you want, if you want a new and fresh and disgusting thing from Alice Cooper, just go to Scottsdale and watch him play in a golf tournament. <laughs> he doesn't dress all in the black when he's doing a Scottsdale golf tournament. He's in the shorts. He's in the shirt. He's wearing the little white hat. It's disgusting. Yes. yes. Bunny. Well, anyway, all right. So they're kind of suspecting I have cancer. And they're the suspecting. Huh? They're suspecting you have cancer. Oh, yeah. This is this is a big fucking game now. Yeah. It's like, well, you know, you, you, we did your blood test, so now there's, now that, you know, there are traces, indications that you might have cancer, you're going to have to have a colon colostomy. Jeannie Price called colon colostomy. Colonoscopy? Thank you. When they were wanting her to have one, even with the insurance, it was going to be five fucking thousand dollars out of pocket. That's Jesus. not happening. Jesus. So, uh, so they made me shit in a cup instead. And I have done that. I have done that. Then I had to, I had to mail my shit off to somebody. Uh, I did that too. I also mailed my shit, buddy. So now, so there it was like, well, well, we we found traces, you know, there was blood in the stool and this and that. And, uh, now you're really gonna have to call. Get, these are indicators of cancer, and you're gonna you're now you're gonna have to get the call. So it's just a big game, and I'm already fucking tired of it. So are you gonna find out what kind you have? Type we'll one, type two. We'll see. Uh, I'm not gonna let them run run me broke, throwing darts to the fucking dartboard. Yeah. I mean, let's be realistic here, okay? I'm 60 years old, or will be really soon. I'm 320 fucking pounds. I am diabetic. I smoke. I am five years overdue for a massive heart attack. So how far do I want to chase this dog? You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. But... <sighs> Funny... Look... So, so, so... I pay five thousand dollars for them to take a stab that it might be colon cancer, dudes. I, I've been smoking since I was fourteen. Maybe check the lungs first. I don't know. That's just me. <laughs> Bunny, look. I've got this big fight coming up. And I know that you want to train me to fight, but I can't be a fighter if you're not going to be a fighter. So I need you to fight this cancer just like I'm going to fight whoever that British guy was from the last film. 
Oh, I only watched it the one time, but I'm trying to tie everything together. Yeah. And it's difficult. Yeah. My wife says, wouldn't that be a bitch if it wasn't even the cigarettes that did it? Yeah. Yeah, that would. Uh, me, personally, I'm still pulling through, like, massive heart attack. That's what I'm pulling for, you know. And, and, and there are good odds. There are good odds, you know. But nice, quick. Hurts like a motherfucker, but it's over in not too bad a time. You know? As opposed to this shit. Like, okay, so what are they going to test next? And what are they going to test next? And what's the price tag on each one of these things while you fart around guessing where the cancer might be? I understand where you're coming from. It's just a bit difficult for me. We talked about this on the podcast. What? The fact that I haven't really had a major death in my life. Yeah. And how cool is the that? The biggest to be first. The biggest I'm I'm about to be 50 it's an and the biggest honor. I'm I'm about to I'm 46 and the biggest death that has ever happened in my life was my mother-in-law. Yeah. You know? And when my dog do die. And then I, you said on the podcast, you said, well, uh, so your big death is either going to be your father or me. Yeah. And it's like, you bastard, buddy. I Unless I am go on... to dying first. Like, really, Dad? Do you want to come in second here? Really? You want to come in second? I mean, you're a competitive kind of guy. I know it would eat you up to come in second. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to beat your ass to the grave. <laughs> the, the, the one thing that I've always wanted for a funeral for me is just to have a really serious funeral. Super serious funeral. Same and anymore. then... Okay. And then... Everyone sings a Beatles song in a different language. <laughs> like, like every, it's all serious, and yes, we're remembering Mei Lin, tragic. And now if you'll open your hymnals, and then suddenly they have to sing Yesterday in Portuguese. Yeah. You know? Like, that's what I want. It's just a, a moment in the middle. Funny. I, I, I want to be disposed of as quickly, as cheaply as possible. If you can hide me in the dumpster, that's fine with me. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut open your asshole and remove all of your innards and turn you into a muppet. Like uh like 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 Okay, okay, okay. Rolf okay. the dog. You're so kind like kind of on the right what? track here. I mean you you can kinda of sell me on this. If I if you can make me into an Elmer McGurdy, that might yes that uh, I could kind of be down for that plan. Oh my God, that's such a great that's such a great idea, and I love that so much. If one Funny. day they just accidentally find my corpse in the corner of an abandoned burger game. <laughs> <laughs> Or how about this? I think my I could get my kids behind this. We turn your body into an audio animatronic figure, like a like a Chuck E. Cheese kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah, like a Five Nights at Freddy's. We stuff your body into an animatronic, and then your soul inhabits that. But instead of going around killing kids at a pizza place, you'll be like an animatronic that tries to get high and watch bad movies. I'm like, unless it's Nicolas Cage, I'm taking that motherfucker out. Yeah. Powered by AI to keep the podcast going. Thank you, yes. honey. Bunny, I support you and whatever decision you decide to do. I love you. I am on hormone replacement therapy. 
which makes it very easy for me to cry, but I was already like that before the pills. Yes. So, this just makes it worse. You probably can't tell, but I am barely holding it together. You're doing good. You're doing good. Thank you very much. I'm trying to think of funny things to say, but Kid Rock, not my, not my here. beloved Ray Stevens. <laughs> <laughs> he blatantly, he blatantly drank a Bud Light. Yeah, now, of Kid course, Rock. it was. It was a Coors Light that was photoshopped to look like a Bud Light. Yeah. Huh? Do I have the podcast playing somewhere else? No. Like echoing? I don't know. Echoing? Natasha says there's an echo. Hold on. Uh, I'm going to try something because I'm actually not using the camera uh, microphone. So I'm going to switch it. Go over there and listen, honey. Is it and just tell me on if you? Okay, I don't know. I just switched microphones. Can you hear me all right right now, buddy? Now you sound like you're underwater. I do? I sound like I'm underwater? Okay. Bloop! 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 Honey, how do I sound? There's a big time difference. Switchback. My wife says switchback. You called me a what? Switchback. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. I thought you typed. You know what? It doesn't matter. Uh, okay, so I'm back. There you go. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. No, I don't have it playing anywhere else. It's like uh, Natasha says that the sound is kind of messed up, but... Really? Just on your yeah. end or on both sides? I don't know. I don't know. But... Um, so we have to take a ten-minute break yes. before we go to our historic section. So that stinks, but that's okay. So she's all just just me. I only have a little echo. Thank you, honey. Uh, so so you probably have cancer. It's looking that way. It's looking that way. Okay. Not sure what kind, uh, because that will cost a lot of money to figure out. Yeah? Yeah. You know what? I know a guy down the street. He runs a company, Billy Bob's Discount Colonoscopies. He'll do any colonoscopy for $40 and no questions asked. And don't mind your hand, his hands on your hips. Yeah. All the examination so, is in progress. <laughs> so, like a Billy Bob's discount colonoscopy. Okay, I see something's wrong here. What's wrong? Well, you're full of shit. But, um, tis. This has been of already. We're finishing part one, Jeff. Yes. The Betty White Memorial Podcast segment brought to you by Ray Channel Legends. Download today. Uh, this has already been an special episode. Yes, it has. It's like that episode of Saved by the Bell where uh, the chick from Showgirls is on the caffeine pills and is going crazy. That's what this episode is like. Uh, Bunny has cancer. The cool kids at my high school are trying to get me to smoke marijuana. Yeah. Uh, Mal is being peer pressured into cockfighting. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. 
very special it's episode. Horrible, horrible problem here. That's a thing here in this state. That's how behind Oklahoma is. That cockfighting is still a thing. Really? Yeah, it's a thing. And you see it on the news. Man, Luke got drunk at the peach pit. That's it, Luke. Give me the keys. I'm driving home. No, his <laughs> the, the actor's name was Luke Perry. What was his name? Dylan. There you go. Yeah, it was Dylan. Dylan got drunk at the peach pit. Luke died right after uh, being in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. I love you, Bunny. And I would appreciate it if you didn't die. <laughs> so there's that. And I just want you to know that. I love you. I love you too. I would like to I love say something. <laughs> yes, yes, Maxwell? If Bunny dies, then he's dead to me. Both literally and figuratively. What was that? Maxwell said... If you die, then you're dead to him. <laughs> That's pretty freaking hilarious for like an eleven year old Maxwell. Yes, yeah. That was that was an impressive joke you just dropped on the podcast. Listen, That's... I have a mental knowledge about violence and it's weird. Yes. Okay. That, that's, well, why that... in, that's why he's in charge of writing my death scenario fanfics. Nice. Okay. Uh, so that's it for Jeff this week. A very special tugging on the heartstrings, tear jerking episode of Jeff, the Betty White Memorial podcast segment brought to you by Red Shadow Legends. Download today. We're going to be taking about a 10 minute break. And then when we come back, it's history time. And I've got a musical number. It's going to blow your minds. So stick around. We're taking a short break. I'm going to go to the little girl's room. And probably just um, uh, anxiously pace. I'm going to go... Oh, it cut out. Okay, there we go. Ooh, where do I go? We don't usually do it like this. <laughs> <laughs> 